In this tutorial, you will learn how to use App Inventor to create an app that remotely controls an NXT robot. To begin with, go to My Projects, create a new project, and give it a name. I've called mine NXT Remote. Uh, next, I'm going to make some cosmetic changes by giving this app a suitable icon that I found on Google. And I'm going to lock down the screen orientation to landscape. That's a personal preference. Um, you have to lock it down to keep your buttons and labels from bouncing all over the screen. I'm going to uncheck scrollable. That's going to make the fill parent behaviors of the various things I change um, behave appropriately. And I'm going to give the title right here uh, NXT Remote. Next, I'm going to drag a button onto the screen. I'm going to change the background color to red to indicate to the user that we are not connected when the app starts. I'm going to change the font size to 30 because I have fat fingers and I want to make it easy to click that button. I'm going to change the text to connection and I'm going to change its name to button connection. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to bra drag a list picker onto the screen. I'm going to rename it list picker connection and I'm going to uncheck its visibility. We need the list picker to connect to an NXT but it doesn't give us enough flexibility to make a really cool app so I'm gonna make it invisible and uh, engage it using the the button. Next I'm going to grab a vertical screen arrangement component and change its height to fill parent. I'm gonna drag a couple labels into it. The first label is going to be called label power I'm going to change the text just to help me see what's going on when I'm designing it. And the second one's going to be label steering. We don't actually have to change the texts of these two labels. I do it just to keep track of what's going on when I'm creating apps. I know that these labels refer to those two things. Next I'm going to drag a screen arrangement component that's a horizontal arrangement. And I'm going to drag another one inside it. And then I'm going to drag a label to the left side and another label to the right side. And I'm going to change this horizontals width to fill parent. And I'm going to change the inside uh, width to fill parent and the height to fill parent. And then I'm going to change the label to label left motor and the other label to label right motor. And I'll change the text here too. Alrighty, that completes the visible portion of what we're going to build. Now it's time to add some non-visible components such as a Bluetooth client, some NXT drive commands, these NXT drive commands need to be commands need to be configured by connecting to the Bluetooth client we created right here and locking them down to only control one motor instead of the default. And of course it will be difficult to program unless we give them appropriate names. So I'm going to call this NXT drive right motor and NXT drive left motor. Notice left motor is C and right motor is B. That's sort of a Lego convention. Next I'm going to add the accelerometer, a clock, which, while, which I will set to every 100 milliseconds. You can go a little bit faster, but anything above 50 milliseconds will cause uh, delays, actually. Uh, it starts overrunning the buffer on the Bluetooth radio of the NXT, I believe. And last but not least, we're going to add a notifier, which will allow us to communicate to the user. That completes the design portion of this app. Now it's time to program the logic. We're going to begin by going to the list picker connection before picking uh, logic and simply uh, setting its elements to the Bluetooth addresses and names that we have on our phone. Now this would actually be enough to make a connection. Unfortunately, you're probably going to make a mistake and you're going to get a somewhat cryptic 
uh, error message. So we're going to test for some common errors. The most common being that you actually didn't pair to an NXT prior to using this app. So we're going to check to see if the list of addresses and names on your phone is zero. If it is, we need to send the user a message that says, let's see here, you must pair your phone to or with an NXT prior to using this app. If the list is greater than zero or not zero, then we're going to uh, go ahead and connect. There's one other common error that I make frequently and that is I forget to turn on my Bluetooth radio. So we're going to test to make sure that the Bluetooth client is actually enabled. If it is enabled, we're going to go ahead and make the connection. If it's not enabled, we're going to send another message to the user stating see here you must enable your Bluetooth radio before you can connect to an NXT. And that completes the uh, before picking logic. Now it's time to check out the after picking. This is actually very simple if not intuitive. Let's see, we're going to set the Bluetooth connection to the element we picked from our list picker. The selection. And if we do make that connection, if we go through this code, we're going to want to change the whoops, the button connection's background color to green. That will let the user know that we're connected. Next, we're going to use the button to actually both connect and disconnect using some if else logic here. And we're going to test that by going to the Bluetooth client is connected. And if it is connected, then what we want to do is disconnect. And we would also want to change the button's background color to red. However, if it's not connected, then we want to connect, and so we trigger the list picker using this call. That connects our robot in our phone, but it doesn't send it any messages. So what we need to do now is create four variables. We're going to have power, and we'll initialize all these to zero, just because what else are we going to do? Steering. Left motor. And right motor. Next, it's time to actually start sending the messages or sending, printing information to the screen and sending messages by uh, using this clock timer event. So the first thing we're going to do is use the uh, set the power to the accelerometer's z-axis and the problem with this is the z the the phone's range here is only between negative 10 and positive 10 we need values that range between negative 100 and positive 100 so what we're going to do is multiply this value by 10 and that'll be our power we're going to do the same thing for steering And I'm going to use the y. I'm using the z-axis for power and the y-axis for steering here. If you chose the portrait landscape, you'd be using different axes. Next, I'm going to provide feedback to the user uh, so they know a little bit about what's going on inside this app. Uh, that will text out power. That's going to be set to power. And we're actually going to do it a kind of a fancy way here. 
we're going to join some things so that it's very explicit what these numbers mean when the the user looks at these numbers on the screen. Let's see, label steering dot text. This is a the main reason that I include all of these labels is to make debugging very easy. Um, Otherwise, I find I make a simple mistake and it's hard to pin it down. So the next step is to define the left motor power and the right motor power. There's a simple trick. Um, the left motor power can simply be determined by taking the power and adding the steering. And the right motor power can, is, is almost the same, except we're going to be subtracting the power minus the steering. Once this is done, we're going to go ahead and set these labels in the same way. So that the user can see that this information was um, converted correctly. The information from the accelerometer was transformed appropriately and there was no error. You didn't mix up your addition or subtraction or whatnot, which I've done in the past. Let's see. Last but not least, it's time to actually send the message. And we're going to do this using an if statement because if we do it when we're not connected, we're actually going to get about a zillion uh, error messages. An error message every tenth of a second, to be precise. And so we're only going to send this, this message to the NXT in the event that we're connected. And it's a simple message. We're telling the left motor, the left motor to move forward indefinitely and the right motor to move forward indefinitely at power levels that correspond to our variables. Because these can be negative, the motors can move in a negative direction which would be backwards, and it'll allow us to have a robot that drives around pretty easily. This is the lot this uh, logic completes our app and after you pair your phone to your NXT you should be able to connect to it and remotely control your NXT robot.